Hello, everyone, and welcome into the Grip Lock preview of the first full major of the year, Champions Cup. This is the second major for FPO, but the first MPO and FPO major that we'll be seeing this year. It's actually the third major if you count college nationals, but we're not here to talk about any of that. We're here to talk about some Champions Cup. Um, super, super excited for this weekend as we are headed back to Peoria, Illinois mm -hmm. for four rounds at the grueling Northwood Black. Yeah, I think this is the, probably has to be the most intriguing major for me this season. Uh, it's I've been excited about this ever since they announced it because they were like, what's the most evil thing we can do to these uh, competitors? Let's make them go four rounds at the course that breaks them in two rounds. And I think this is going to be some of the most interesting golf we'll see all season. It's such a stark contrast to the golf that's really played at any other point on tour. Um, just just such a punishing track out there. And four rounds is just, oh my gosh, like I... I I, I shudder even thinking about having to play four rounds out there and keep your game intact. I think it's just going to be, we might see a style of tournament that we've never seen before. No, it's going to be very exciting. So it's a hybrid design this year, combining the Northwood black that we are used to of last year with the Northwood gold um, that you saw at Worlds of 2019. I believe they're pulling like three or four holes off of that layout um, and taking three or four holes away from the Northwood black layout. And then they're adding in two basically new holes, I do believe, but more or less, it's all Northwood. It's tight, it's wooded, it's long, and it's a monster. Um, the weather this weekend is looking iffy. Uh, Thursday is going to be nice. There's a chance of rain on Friday as of right now. Originally, that was a chance of thunderstorms, but now it just looks like rain, which is good. It's going to be okay on Saturday. The wind's going to increasingly pick up as it goes on. In a wooded course, that's hit or miss. Yeah. Um, and then thunderstorm possibilities on Sunday. So Sounds pretty gross. Going to be important to get off to a hot start, <laughs> especially on Thursday. Wind's down, sun's out. Someone needs to get hot on Thursday um, because it could also be crucial to capitalize on the nice weather because it might end early I with thunderstorms rolling in I on Sunday. I hope not. I hope not. We saw, uh, it's funny enough, we've seen a tournament end uh at Northwood early. It was Ledgestone a few years back. 2021. Um, where they had to end Ricky it and Calvin three. Todd. Yep. Um, but, whew, I mean, I, I, love the, I love the idea that, like, what if the winner of this tournament in the MPO division is, like, 11 or 12 under? Like, just... I, I, I really root for that because we never see it. And... If, if someone you, got to 20 under, I'd be pretty... I think 20 under, you win it. Averaging five under around at Northwood Black, I would say you're gonna have to average. Maybe I would say maybe average a stroke better. Maybe six. So like maybe twenty four at low twenties for me. Yeah. yeah. If someone if someone gets to thirty under, my mind will be blown. I feel like the winning recipe. Yeah, I would be very shocked. Be like, I feel like the winning recipe is gonna be like somebody goes out, shoots a course record ten, and then the rest of the rounds are like a. Uh, I mean, even if you shoot a ten, and then you've got to shoot what like a even if you go like. Five five five, which would be insane. That would be an insane tournament. 20, and that's twenty five. Yeah, I might be with you. The twenty might be like that. Probably it, wins the tournament. Now let's get into some storylines because it's going to be a long, grueling course. Four rounds out here makes it anybody's game. So we're going to talk about a lot of players here. Uh, first, I want to bring up Ulti World published their course preview or their tournament preview here, and they pulled a very interesting stat in their preview, which is since twenty twenty two, nobody has shot better in relation to par on Northwood Black than Ricky Wysocki, winning the twenty twenty two Ledgestone Open, finished third in twenty twenty three. Um, now. Winning. It's been, well, he won 2022. 2021 was the tie. Or is it 2021? Oh, yeah. so they didn't even give him the, the credit. Uh, well, they were only going since, only 2022. since 2022. Okay. It's been nearly seven years since Ricky last won a major, which mm -hmm. is crazy. We started talking about this narrative like a few years ago. And it was like, oh, it's been like five years, seven now. It's a long time. A lot of time he has, has passed. He spent the majority of like his prime age <laughs> but not winning majors. He hasn't had a major at Northwood Black where he statistically is the best player. What do you think are his chances of breaking that streak this weekend? What did he have? A, was there a world world championship played at Northwood Paul Black? Paul McBeth, 2019. Time? Right. So I'm saying like he had part of a major at Northwood Black. Well, that was Northwood Gold. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Slightly different. Um, I think... The problem with Ricky is like it's very easy to be like, oh, this kind of lines up. He is he is probably if you had to bet money on somebody to survive this course over four rounds, he's probably the guy I would pick. But the problem is a lot of majors line up for Ricky, right? Like he's got a game that translates to everything. So it's this isn't the first time over the few, past few years that we've been like this really makes sense for Ricky. Like this is going to be where it gets it done, and these major things. 
majors have a different like there's always going to be a little bubble over just winning any event when you haven't won in a while or if you like there's always going to be something like you're going to be kind of bumping your head against that the majors is a different level i think that really gets in people's head and ricky is like he's got a pretty strong mental game so the fact that it's it's you know seven years is long enough for me to say there's something more than just he's been unlucky at majors like there's there's definitely something that's going on there i think it's gotten to him and uh so while most of the time I would like to say, I would love to say, hey, yeah, Ricky, this one makes perfect sense. I think that I think there's a good chance that he struggles again just because it hasn't gone his way for majors. I hope he can get um, finally get one. But yeah, I just I don't know. I just don't see the end of that that drought. I think the end is this weekend. I think this is it for Ricky. Well, that's like that's um, what I'm saying. That's deja vu. We've because, said this so many times. Because this major It'll come true eventually. This might as well be a new major. Because yeah, we're going true. away from because if you look at all the Champions courses, Cup with a new major though, but Champions Cup and WR Jackson, that Ricky has game. never been like the guy at WR Jackson. He is the guy at Northwood Black. Now there's another guy we'll talk about next that is also the guy at Northwood Black. But there's a reason I like Ricky over him right now. Um, I think Ricky's game it hasn't been to Ricky standards this year as of performance on the scoreboard, but I think he is in just a fine spot because it's just the field so deep right now that what used to be second, third, first is like top tens. And that's just what Ricky does right now. And I think that Ricky's going to be rolling into champions cup with a really solid finish at music city. We thought that was important. He got it. He's coming in. He's a big momentum guy. I think he's going to be feeling really good stepping onto Northwood black. Um, and I think that is this weekend. I think it's like the perfect storm for him to overtake it. Um, so I think that, this is the weekend for Ricky. If he doesn't do this one, okay, I don't like him at European Open. I like a lot of guys more than him at Worlds. And I, I don't, has he ever won USDGC? No. Yeah, he's ringless at USDGC. Yeah. So, like, if he doesn't do it here, we'll, we might be having this conversation next year very easily of, like, is, it has now been eight years since Ricky won him. So, well, it's time for him to capitalize. USDGC is, like, we love, you got to love him at USDGC, but he doesn't win it. Um, the, the thing about this tournament for his game, especially like I think this season, he's really you don't always see him or really having it at all this year. Seeing him like in contention on the final day, other than he's kind of trying to make a move from a little bit further back. I think the problem is you have so many of these young guns right now that are coming out the gates with these super hot first rounds. And I think the four round event probably helps Ricky's case, gives him a little more time. Uh, and that may, and he may just have to wait people out. But I think he needs to come out of the gates a little bit hotter, try to feel his way uh, forward from the top of the leaderboard rather than having to count on a final day run and somebody else collapsing for him to get the victory because that just hasn't worked out this year yeah now another player looking to end a major slump here is calvin heimberg historically he is the other guy to beat out here he's very good but missing a sidearm right now or he has a little bit of a sidearm but not his normal one due to an injury ongoing injury so this could be an interesting one um not necessarily off the tee but definitely scrambling could be something to factor in here so do you think it'll hold him back too much this weekend or you think it's not gonna be a factor I think it will hold him back, but I think the interesting thing could be that sometimes having a different... Obviously, he has the mental block to deal with that he hasn't won the major yet, and that's a very big mental block. Sometimes having something else to focus on can maybe help that a little bit. Uh, if he's if he's going to play attack the course differently than he would, and if he's more so thinking about how to kind of navigate around without using a forehand, maybe that will kind of take over his his game plan and he won't be thinking as much about uh the moment but um so i think maybe there's a world where that balances out but you know it's just been a, it's another one where for forever now it's been the safe bet to bet against calvin at a major he just hasn't been able to get it done i think with him not being at 100 percent, even though there's you know there's always a chance that he could go off and i think you can get around this course with just a backhand i don't i don't love him no i don't think this is his weekend here um unfortunately because like the narrative's only getting bigger, but if we look at Music City, it was a course that obviously a completely different style course, but it was one that plays off the tee like slightly towards forehands, but people get around it fine backhand, and we saw him struggle drastically. Yeah. Now, obviously, like I'm saying, this course is completely different, but it is in the same vein of like it plays completely fine backhand, but there are some forehands, and the scrambling's also a big thing, and I think what's tough for Calvin is he's not in the boat of like a 
uh, a James Conrad or a Chris Dickerson where they're used to not relying on a forehand sure. and they're just so comfortable with that backhand to where Calvin's going to see a forehand line and then have that doubt of like, I would normally throw this. I'm right. going to this instead. That's a good point. Um, I think that you can't have any lapse of confidence on Northwood Black. Yeah. I think that's the key. And I think this injury thing going on with Calvin could call some of that, which I think is going to be too much for him to overcome to win. Could he get himself into a good position here? Sure. Um, but I didn't pick him in my top three. And I don't think that this is going to be his weekend, yeah. personally. Uh, now... This player here, Paul McBeth, coming into form at just the right time. We know he can play well out here. He had a good performance last year, and he's chasing history of his own. He's looking to win major number 18, which would tie Ken Climo for the most all-time, and this tournament would also complete his career Grand Slam as he's not been able to take down Champions Cup as it is a relatively newer major. So yeah. with what you saw this past weekend, is Paul's game ready for him to bring home another major? Um, I would have to lean towards no. I... I think that last week, I don't know, last week, the results of last week were just interesting. I think because that course played so forehand friendly and he was, he's been relying on that a lot. I don't know. I'm not, I didn't see quite enough from Paul to be like, Ooh, Paul's back. I saw him, you know, have flashes of, of really great moments, put together a couple good rounds. And then in the final round, when it's his time to shine, he faltered a little bit and didn't quite look himself. So I'm not really all the way back. I think if he gets off to a good start, um, similar to Rick, if he gets off to a good start and and kind of can get the wind in his sails a little bit, he's dangerous. He's absolutely dangerous in a major tournament. Um, but yeah, I think there's it's going to be in the back of his mind. This is a major he hasn't won. I know he's going to want to win this before his career's uh, over. And um, it's a good thing that he got. I mean, we wouldn't even be talking about him if it weren't for last week's performance. I think it's great that he got some momentum. And because of that, I will certainly be watching him closely. And I, it would be great to see him get in contention. But I don't know, four rounds at this course, it, it, it could be one of those things where it just depends if, if this just becomes one of those events where a couple guys get hot and cause I could see this being an event that we haven't had because of the way this course can separate players. I could see this being an event where some guy goes out there the first two rounds rattles off like an eight and a nine under and we're playing catch up. And that, that's not the type of event. I don't think Paul is going to win. I think Paul could win an event where after two rounds, you know, the lead is at 10 or 11 or like it's it's staying kind of it's staying kind of leveling itself out and staying around something normal. Um, I don't see him coming out of the gates and just pedal to the metal. Um, but with four round tournaments, if he can wait people out, sometimes, you know, that, that can work out for him. So, yeah, I don't I don't love him at this event. I just don't really see it going his way. It's hard for me to ignore history with Paul at majors. And you give Paul four rounds at a grueling course. I know what recent history would say. I like him. I don't necessarily know if I like him to win. I like him to get in contention here. Um, he, I think that the beginning of the season, there was a lot of lacking confidence, right? Those first several events, figuring out the shoulder injury, figuring out life on a road as a new dad, figuring out all of that. I'm not going to say one event he figured it all out, but he figured something out last weekend to get himself in contention without his game. It wasn't like he played a perfect game. Like no. he, he had a lot of mistakes and was still in second place. And going into that final round, he was only two strokes back. He was right in the thing. Um, so with that, he's going to feel at home in Peoria. He loves, you know, being at the Ledgestone area. He loves, you know, Nate and that whole crew. He knows them well. It's, it's going to feel comfortable for him. He knows this course really well. He has good history here. He's won a world title out here. They're bringing back some of the holes that he won the world title on. You got to like him, I think. Now, he could come out, lay an egg, and oh, well, Paul was a flash in the pan at Music City. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think that he got some confidence. I think he's going to be in a killer mindset. I think he's hungry for a major. Is it going to be enough to overtake everyone else? I don't quite know that, but I, it won't surprise me to see him in contention at this thing down the stretch, and uh, I think that's going to be really exciting. The last time that we saw kind of Paul and uh, Eagle battling was when Eagle returned from an injury to a major at the European Open. True. So he should be making his official return this weekend. <laughs> um, he missed last weekend due to a tweaked back, but this should be his official return due to an injury. Um, and like I said, he came back at a major, battled out against Paul, one of the all-time greatest disc golf you'll ever see. Could we see a similar storyline here? I mean, that would be written in the stars if that happened again. Like, that would just be a crazy, crazy thing. Um, Eagle is 
man, it, he is going to be an interesting one to watch because I don't think I think he's been out long enough that like people are going to be like like oh Eagles back, but because it's a major, if he came back at a normal event, we're kind of usually looking for something to latch onto and be like oh this is the event Eagles coming back, we're all going to watch because it's a major and somebody people are already locked in on the idea that this is a major. I think Eagle is sneaking in a little bit more, um, especially being the course that it's at. People start to turn their attention to certain players because Northwoods is a particular course that people start to kind of turn their attention there. And Eagle, like I said, you said the last time he came back from an injury like this and he was there was so much uncertainty, he, he won a major. So I think that there's a chance we could be all of a sudden, like after a couple of days being like, oh my gosh, like Eagle might do this again. Um, the odds of both of them playing really well and dueling like that, I would say are pretty low. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to be shocked if, if Eagle comes back with a splash it is um, definitely quite a welcome back to the Pro Tour present to have to play four rounds of this course. Yeah, if uh, if <laughs> disc golf gambling... Let's just say his bag's going to get worn in pretty quick. Yeah, if disc golf gambling was already a thing, I would be avoiding all Eagle McMahon bets of any type with oh, like a vengeance. Like There's no chance I would go close to him because this guy, he could come out and he could be the guy that goes 10-9 yeah. to start this event and ever, it's just the catch Eagle show and he could come out and do the exact same thing over par. I would say it's more likely, I think for him though, it is more likely he comes out and shoots two really hot rounds rather than comes out and just blows up a few times. I would agree, yeah. but I have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah, I don't know. Um, if I ha- if you were like, tell me where you think Eagle McMahon's going to finish, I would say around 25th, if I had to guess. Um, but, yeah. I mean, he could be in 100th, he could be in 1st. I mean, th- th- there is no way to he's know not, what we're about to see. He's not going to be in 100th. I'm pretty confident about and that. There's just no way to know what we're about to see out of Eagle. Yeah. Uh, so, and it, heck, he might tweak his back again and not play again. True. There's no there's no telling. Yeah. Um, so, Eagle McMahon. Hopefully not, because I'm sure he's been practicing the last few days. So, hopefully I would he's imagine. feeling good. Yeah, I have no clue what we're about to see out of Eagle. Now, one player that I think is a very interesting one coming into this is Cole Riddallen. Took down Ledgestone last year. Has to be considered coming into this weekend. Um, he went 12 under across two rounds in Northwood last year during that Ledgestone win. Yeah. Uh, he's had a really good start to the season. His worst finish is 26 at chess.com. Do you think he has a chance to take down his first major this weekend? Yeah, I think he does. Uh, I think Cole's a good player. I watched a little bit of him last year because he was on some of the, obviously on the lead cards. And he's just a really smooth player. He has effortless distance because distance does provide an advantage at this course, especially some of those par fours and fives where there is opportunity to really move up the fairway. But um, you obviously have to have such precision because you're talking about the smallest landing zones, very, very tight hallways. And... Cole is able to accomplish both of those things. He has a very smooth run up. It's very simple and he gets his discs. He, he seems to have a really, really good release in the woods. So I think that uh, he could definitely, definitely be a threat this week. Yeah. I like, I like his chances out here. I just think what scares me is if it got to crunch time, I don't know if he could hold on. Like, I mean, first time it would be his first major we win. Out. <laughs> we um, finally made of. So I think that I think I'm expecting at least one hot round out of him. Like I'm expecting him to, get himself into it some way shape or form but can he hold on i'm not so confident so don't be surprised to see him in the top five i would be surprised to see him bring home the bacon here uh the defending champion out here though is isaac robinson he when and you know this course when you initially think northwood black like you would think isaac robinson should be able to piece this thing up uh, he last year only went one under across the two rounds at Northwood during Ledgestone, though, and he has not been having a good start to a season, almost a shockingly bad start to the season compared yeah. to what was expected out of him. What do you think are his chances coming back into Champions Cup here? Mm, not good. Um, I think we'll probably see signs of forward momentum before he does, like, if he has a, a really good streak this year, like he kind of has had in the past couple seasons where he figures it out for a few weeks. Um, but I mean, I know that he's, he's talked about before, like sometimes his wins just come out of nowhere. I think he just all of a sudden gets hot. He's an interesting player because when he is at his best, he looks unbeatable. I mean, when at this event last year, he looked unbeatable. He was just, just wherever he wanted that disc to go his landing. When he's at his best doing that, you know, his he's a very good angle control player, which allows him to, and he can throw mids and fairways very well, which allows you to land in, in spots and stay where you land. And that is a very important skill out here. So if he were able to figure out his game, then I think his game would apply to this course, you know, 
obviously he's defending champ at a different course, but I think his game would apply here. Absolutely. But right now it's just a matter of getting it together because he hasn't been good so far this year. And you can't really say that this is where he's going to magically figure it out because Northwood, I, I, I mean, momentum can certainly come from just the beginning of your round starting out well, but like you got to look to the guys who have been throwing the disc really well to do well out there because it's a tough place to find your game because if like, a few bad holes and you're going to be like, I want to go home. Yeah, I, I fully agree. I mean, it, I'm going to be honest. I would be kind of surprised to see Isaac get in contention this weekend. Yeah, um, I would he too. just going into the season if you would have asked me this in november i would have said isaac robinson is going to be a threat at champions cup and he's definitely going to be a threat at worlds I, like i could see at the before going into the season i was expecting isaac robinson to be a weekend week out threat yeah now i did expect a slower start to the season because of the types of courses we're playing i didn't expect this slow of a start yeah he, like i expected him to at least like i mean he's been outside the couple, top 40 something. a couple weeks ago he got himself in contention but then fell off in the final round but yeah, he's he's been very much from the outside looking in. Yeah, and it hasn't been like there. I, I genuinely believe players are somewhat course specific, but when you are a player of Isaac's caliber, Chris Dickerson, Anthony Barella, Gannon Burr, Cal, the list goes on and on. Like Chris and Isaac, say what you want about them being course specific, but if you're that good, your game does translate. Like you, you will be, you should be able to still fit knock to top 10, top 15. You just might not win at those right. courses. That hasn't been happening. Yeah. So like what the heck happened to Isaac Robinson? I don't know, but it has me having no faith in him coming into this weekend. Um, if he comes top five, I will be surprised to be completely honest. But on the flip side of that coin, like if his game clicks, like we saw last year and it's the Isaac Robinson that showed up at last year's champions cup then yeah, he could run away with this thing. I just haven't seen that in so long that I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I don't know. Now, I did mention two players we got to talk about here. The two-headed monster that started this season off, Anthony Barella, Gannon Burr. They've been kind of, obviously, A-B more than Gannon, but both of them have had incredible starts to the season, although typically not known as Woods players. What do you think of their chances, A-B to win his first major, Gannon to take down another one? Well, I think I think the Woods player thing, I think we a lot of people like to really harp on that. And I, there's obviously going to be some truth to it. Um, you know, there's a bigger margin for error off the tee when you're not in the woods. And there are certain guys who may throw not as far, but are more accurate and will take advantage of that. And that'll get exposed when you get in the woods. But I still believe that the best players in the world, the guys who are playing at the very top of this game, are, are never going to be one-dimensional players. Uh, now, I will say, if you look back on it, you know, Anthony Barella is going to have this giant red flag because last year he had a round where he shot nine over par at Northwood Black. However, if you look a little further back, he shot even the other round, and then the year before, he shot four under, five under. So he can play well at this course. The year before that, he was also, he shot three under even, I think. So he plays well at this course. He had one bad round last year, and I think it is, people are going to be quick to write him off when you're, when you're playing golf this well. Oh, and I mean, last week he had an off week with one round and then ended up climbing himself back into the top 10. Um, so I think when you're playing golf at the level he is right now and have so much confidence, um, you still have to like him. Now, Gannon is a little different. I would actually expect his game to translate to the woods just fine, but he has struggled year over year at this course. And that to me is a little bit more red flag. It's like he, I think his best round is maybe a four or five under, but he's had a lot of rounds over par. Um, he's obviously newer to the tour. He's very young. Um, I see more visible frustration out of him than a lot of players on tour. And I do think that he's one, um, it's not that I don't think his game lines up. I do think that he is one that could get a little bit beat up mentally and um, and kind of walk himself out of the tournament. But I still think if he if he comes out the gates and plays well, he, he can still be a threat on this course. There's no reason. There's not a shot that he doesn't necessarily have at the course. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that more players should get brought into the conversation because we're in the woods, but I'm not willing to take those players and write them out of the conversation. Yeah, I think Anthony Barella definitely wins his first major this year. I also definitely think it's not this weekend. Um, I think A.B. and Gannon, there's a reason I think their season start has been so hot, and I think a part of that is the type of courses we're playing. I just don't see their game translating to the level it does out there in the woods. Um, could they both come top 10? Absolutely. Could they both win? Sure. I just think there's so many more guys get piled in that it kind of pushes them down because I think a lot of what they excel at and beat the field at gets neutralized by the wood woods. And so I just don't think um, 
I don't have either of them in my top three, which I know could be considered crazy. What do you think Gannon excels at that gets neutralized by the Woods? I just think when you're throwing, like a lot of times, both of them aren't super touchy players. A lot of they are throw it hard. And when you're throwing it hard, that like you don't really do that a lot when you're scrambling per se. You're trying to hit tight gaps off the tee with tight gaps. You're a lot of times people are disking down and stuff like that. And I think that's where it just neutralizes their strength over the field because you're that's why I really like AB and Gannon at New London because New London doesn't do that we're not talking tight woods it's wooded but even WR Jackson I'd like him a lot more because the fairways you can drive semi trucks through here we're not talking that like some of these fairways they're tight they're tight like I don't even know how they get a gator through some gross Um, so when you're trying to just throw a disc hard and that's what your brand is and like that works very well at music city at chess.com that works very well at a lot of these courses even though chess.com did bring in some more technical aspects this is a whole different animal so i think that's where they're not going to struggle as in they're going to be in 50th well they but i could. think it can I be mean, very frustrating if if they're just slightly off and you're just launching a disc it hits a tree and you're ob and that happens you know three holes in a row both of them have historically shown the ability to have effects uh things snowball that doesn't go away overnight just because we're having a hot start to the season doesn't mean that those people the, those people aren't the exact like the, the same the same guys they are the same guys, if that makes sense. So Gannon, more so than AB, because AB's playing completely different, but the guy that blew up on 16 in European Open is still Anthony Barella. That doesn't change. So I think that the snowball effect can definitely still happen, and a course like Northwood Black amplifies that, which is why I'm not willing to put either of them in my top three. Um, I think I am willing to say at least one of the two of them will come top 20. I think one of the two of them could come top 10. Um, I'd be shocked if both of them were in the top three. Could it happen, though? Sure, absolutely. They're very talented golfers, but I do think this course plays better to other people. So it'll be an interesting weekend of golf. Are there any other players that you have your eyes on this week? Yeah, we didn't men- mention uh, Dickerson. Um, I think that he is been, has getting, been getting progressively better. We just mentioned on Crip Block how we've been really sleeping on him we in the top been. 10. And I think that we, you know, we've talked about Champions Cup in the past lining up for his game. I think this course does as well. He is a guy who's really good with touchy lines in the woods. He hits lines better than a lot of golfers out there. He's very crafty, can throw rollers, can do all kinds of things, willing to be creative. And like I said, his game's just been coming together lately. So I think things are lining up great for Chris Dickerson. I think he's really the one to watch. Yeah, no, Dickerson could definitely have himself a great time out here. That's the tough part with Northwood is like, any I mean, guy, anyone you can mention can any name, up. and and really, a lot of these good players could absolutely win, and they could come in 80th. Like and Kevin it, Jones could pop off and win uh, win a major. Right it here. is like James Comrade. Could. It's so up in the air. Joel Freeman has played good this out here. Of course, I don't know if you like, if you haven't watched this course. I highly recommend. The only problem with this course is it doesn't translate super well to camera because you are going to see some early tree hits. You're going to see some ugly golf over well overall. Oh, but if you enjoy golf. watching players like struggle and feel like you have to play golf and not up. just chuck it, this is a great tournament. You're um, going to see some of the craziest breaks, some of the worst breaks you've ever seen. You're going to see some some of these some of the shots you're going to be watching and be like, how did that not run into anything? And and you're going to look at these hole previews half the time and be like. That looks miserable. I mean, it is it is hard course. Now, one player I did want to mention before we get into FPO is Casey White. Last year played very solid at Northwood, going 11 under across his two rounds. Also had a top 10 finish so far this year. Um, player to just have on your radar. We'll put it that way. Could he win? No. No. But could he come <laughs> better than expected? Clipped. Yes. Casey White holding the... The Arts and Crafts love Champions Cup trophy. I'd love to see it, but I don't think it's going to happen. But let's throw it over to Joe and get her thoughts on FPL. Welcome into the second FPL major of 2024. This year, Champions Cup will be looking a little bit differently because WR Jackson is actually getting reworked due to the invasive pine beetle. So we'll actually be headed to Peoria, Illinois, and we will be playing the infamous Northwood Black course. We'll be spending four rounds there, and it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard, and lots of drama can unfold. So gear up and get ready. In 2023, we saw Kristen Tatar dominate this event when it was played at WR Jackson. We saw her take home the win at minus 27 strokes on her scorecard. She shot 14 strokes better than second place, which is just mind-blowing if you actually think about it. Owen Scoggins ended up securing her second place, and she shot minus 13. 
Then we had Cat Merch, Katrina Allen, and Haley King all coming in at minus 11, and they all tied for third place. We saw a lot of other names at the top of that leaderboard, and some of those names were Holland Hanley, Jessica Weiss, and Sarah Hokum. It's also important to see how these women are playing at Ledgestone Open because they actually play Northwood Black during that event. So let's take a little look back and see what these women got up to. We saw that Missy Gannon actually ended up taking down this event in 2022 and 2023. And this is where she kind of secured her name, Big Money Missy. Missy plays lights out at Northwood Black and her controlled thrasher shots just look so good through the woods. And her putting comes in clutch here. Kristen is the player to beat going into Champions Cup for 2024. Due to her overall consistency out on the course, her accuracy is amazing, her distance is really good, and she can putt like nobody's business. She also has the ability just to maintain, which is something that a lot of these players, I feel like, struggle with on these long wooded tracks. So what I'm thinking is like, she's able to maintain her physical composure. She's able to maintain her mental stamina. She's able to maintain just not giving strokes back to the course. And she's getting more birdies than she is bogeys. So I definitely think she is the player to beat, but she has two challengers that are coming hot on her heels. We have Ons Goggins as well as Missy Gannon. And based on Stat Mando, they are her two best challengers coming up. And if we pl put these players head to head, we can see that they are almost equal. They are very, very close. The only thing separating them is, is that Own is finishing in the top 10 100% of the time. And Missy is finishing in the top 10 around 86% of the time. So you can't really beat a hundred percent. Like that consistency is just incredible and own. That's amazing. Congrats to you because well done, but Missy is just right there too. So anybody's game going into this event, but I do expect to see these women battling it out. Both Evelina and Hannah did not play Ledgestone in 2023. So they're a little bit of a wild card going into this event. Although we do know that their fairway stats don't lie and they're able to get the disc close to the basket, which could take the putting out of the equation because we do know that that's something that they both struggle with. They're getting consistent top three placements and top 10 placements, but if they can't putt, this course will be very tricky for them. Northwood Black is a super tough wooded track and there are a lot of longer par fours that are very challenging to get. Players are going to want to hit their lines and stay on the fairway. And we know that they will have times where they are off the fairway. When they are off the fairway, they're going to want to scramble. And in order to save par or bogey, just because you don't want to give too much back to this course. It is so important for these players to just hit their lines, make their putts and scramble like no tomorrow <laughs> because this course is so, so difficult. My questions going into Champions Cup are, is Missy Gannon going to three-peat at Northwood Black and become a two-time FPO major champion? Or is Kristen going to get her first FPO major win of the year? Or are we going to see another unique winner on tour? Or someone maybe who has yet to win a major on tour? This is all about to unravel and I'm sure excited to see what goes on and I hope you are too and back over to you guys. Thanks so much, Joe, for that. As Joe mentioned, we're coming into this kind of expecting a three-headed monster of Kristen, Missy, Own. So let's tackle some of Joe's questions regarding them first. Is Missy going to three-peat at events at Northwood Black and start off two for two at the majors this year? Um it would be a tremendous start to the season. I, I, she obviously had the week off. Um, so I think there's always a little bit of difficulty, like trying to get back in the swing of things at a major, at a really difficult course. But Missy, one thing about Missy is when there are just certain events that when she decides that that's the event she's going to be good at, she just wins them consistently. Um, even if it's not even at the same course, like we've seen this with pro tour championships. Uh, we've seen this with Ledgestone. Like, I feel like Missy just kind of takes ownership of events and, you know, maybe, maybe we'll see that happen now that champions cup is being played here. Um, I don't know. I, I'd certainly like her here. I think that her game, um, you know, 
distance is not going to be a huge factor at this event. It's really going to be about just your disc not hitting a tree. That's what it comes down to is like, can you get your disc from point A to point B the whole way forward progress without hitting a tree? Because just moving up the fairways is so, so important when the holes are so long. Uh, so I do think I, I think she has a great chance. Um, it's just going to be, you know, how how consistent can she be after having the week off? Yeah, I really like Missy out here. I think the Joe had mentioned her like flip up thrasher game. I think that fits this course perfectly. Yeah, she's played it very well. And one thing that really bodes well to her is she has way more experience than Kristen. I think Kristen's only played out here twice, um, yeah. like two rounds, one tournament, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. So I think she was. She wasn't here last year. Yeah. So Missy just will know this course better. She true. has more history out here, so that plays a lot to her favor. But on the flip side of that coin, it's Kristen Tatar. So uh, will this be Kristen's first major? Probably. Of the season. Let's clarify. Yeah. It's like seventh major. Uh, odds point to it. Um, yeah, it's like any other event. Now, I do think, because, uh, yeah, four rounds. We're going to see, out of the FPO division especially, probably some crazy score fluctuation. I really don't see this as an event where anybody is just kind of wire to wire. or like I, I really could see this as an event where we're seeing, like, Oh, Kristen gained eight strokes on the field and then she lost six and then she gained five back and then she lost 12. Like it could be that kind of event. Um, and I do like Kristen in events like that because I feel like she's usually on the, on the right end of that sort of thing. But yeah, I mean, you have to just lean into the idea that she's the best player right now, but it's going to be unpredictable. Well, I think how I've been viewing Kristen so far is similar to like vintage Macbeth that like 2015, 16, 17. And one thing about that, you know, well, I guess it'd be more 2012 to 2015, but one thing about that time frame of Macbeth's career is you give him enough rounds on a hard enough course and he was simply going to win. Yeah. That's what Kristen feels like. Now is four rounds enough? Cause typically in at those worlds, we were talking like five to seven rounds and it was just like, Paul was just going to win. There was no way around it. Um, is four rounds enough at Northwood? I think so. Cause I think four rounds at Northwoods is the equivalent of like six rounds at a normal course. Um, and I think if you just give them that much golf, that many shots, like Kristen just statistically will win. Um, but I think Missy Gannon's her biggest threat personally. I do think there's just, there's just the opportunity with this course and four rounds for like the winner to be somebody so random. That's true too. Like true it too. wouldn't page fierce Pierce out of nowhere could be not that one maybe it could be Paige maybe is Haley also, king though like Paige something is also just chasing history of that 18th major is she sitting on 17, 17 as, well, as well i do believe yeah. um but another player we have to talk through Who's here more likely to get to 19 in this era oh God. that's actually kind that's of a, a fascinating, fascinating question. question don't answer that the debate night i was gonna <laughs> say i don't know i don't know because one one's fighting Kristen, the other's fighting the hopefully, whole not, field. hopefully neither of them win, so I can uh, still ask this on, yeah. on debate night. <laughs> That'd be a great question there. Um, but we do have to talk about one more player that Joe had brought up, which is Own Scoggins. This is her chance, one of her many chances that she's had at getting her first ever FPO major title. She mm -hmm. has a lot of Masters titles, no True. FPO major. What do you think of her chances here? Um, I think they're good. I, she had she's played pretty well at this event um, or at this course. I think that you know. Own is just another one of the, like the, all the, the best FPO players are just the ones that can get, like, there's a reason we group these three together. It's because they are the ones that can consistently keep the disc in play and not make huge mistakes and blow up. And so she has really the same odd. I feel like she has the same odds as Missy and just a little bit uh, less odds than Kristen. Just like I felt at most of the events, she keeps the disc in play. Um, I do think with her forehand, the way she likes to throw the disc, you know, there there are a lot of lines that will work for, maybe there's some that won't, but yeah, I think she'll be too fine. She makes up for like her, her lost strokes with her putt, so that's kind of her, her strength, and I, I think she has definitely has a chance. I like Own. Own, you know, in the last year and a half or so has become a player before I was like, yeah, top three, never going to win really. Now it's like, yeah, I like her at just about any event. Yeah, I would say statistic-wise, I would say – I'm giving Kristen a 79% chance to win. I'm okay, giving like Missy this. Gannon a 12%. 79? Yeah, I'm giving... I'd Kri be like 71. I'm going Missy Gannon a 12% chance to win. Okay. I'm giving Owen Scoggins an 8% chance to win, and that should leave the rest of the field 1% chance. Okay. I think that's, what I, I think that's that. where I'm going. Nice. I think 79% Kristen, 12 Missy, 8 own, 1% anyone else. I think, that's how I, I think that's how I wait. I'd hand out a 0% to some people. Well, just like they're all in the 1%. Okay. Like one of them could win, 
one in a hundred chance. Okay. You play this event a hundred times, <laughs> Evelina wins one. Yeah. I think that's how it works out. Uh, we're heading into a major, obviously, which means prediction points are worth double. But coming in this week, Trevor has a lead at 38. Joe is in second at 34. And I am in third. The majors were made at the ground last time. Though. Yeah, majors are important here. I actually, this is not accurate because I should be at 30. Trevor should be at 39. I forgot about the Dickerson bet. I didn't factor that in. Got to remember to factor that in. Um, all right, let's start off with MPO. I'll, I'll kick it off here. Okay. I'm going to go top to bottom because I think it goes least shocking to most shocking, okay. personally. Okay. I've got Ricky Wysocki taking it down. I think he ends his drought here. All right. I snuck Cole Dolan into second, mainly because I don't hate it. I just want his name in my top three because it could happen. That's right. Um, and I want Paul McBeth in third. I'm willing to I'm willing to get hurt again. There's I'd no doubt about it. Give me one week and that gives me as a Paul McBeth fan enough hope to put him back in my top three. Definitely a strong gamble knowing that like Cole and Paul, there's a really good chance they're not top three, but that But could, if they both if, if Yeah, it I could mean, work out. Could work out. Um okay, yeah. I mean I took some different picks, but I definitely played a little safer. I have Chris Dickerson winning. Um, I do really like him here. I've got AB in second. I still think he finds the top three or, or gets close to it. Um, and I'm going to take Ricky Wysocki in third. I do like him in this event. I'm not going to take him out of my top three, but I'm just not confident enough to give him the, the top spot. Joe went with a uh, much more stock top three, but slightly different than ours. Ricky taking it down for her as well. Then she put Calvin Heimberg in second. That'll, that might pay for her. And uh, Anthony Brella in third. Being the only one to put Calvin in the only top three. Only one to put three, Calvin in the top might three. might pay off for her. Now, um, FPO, I feel like most of ours are going to look similar. She went Kristen Missy Own, which happens to be the exact same I went. Well, Kristen I went Missy Kristen Own Missy. So. You rebel. Yeah, how about that? So, uh... Yeah, I mean, basically, it's just who's getting nine points and who's getting six yeah. or seven or whatever it is. Uh, dark horse pick, Joe is riding with Chris Clemens yet again. I'm taking Casey White this week. I'm taking Big Germ. Jeremy Big Cole. Germ. Trevor Big liked what he germ. saw at Music City. Loved it. Loved it. Well, there you have it. The major starts tomorrow, Thursday. So tune in. Four days of disc golf. Uh, pretty much all the disc golf you could ever want to watch. Northwood Black, it's going to be incredible. It's going to be uh, some electric disc golf out there. Probably come down to the wire, and we'll recap it all for you on Monday's episode of Grip Locked. We'll see you then.